Okay guys, so hello. So this is uh, again Sir JJ. We will be discussing again another lesson which is the application of laws of motion. So the, the application of laws of motion which we have three uh, laws which is the uh, we have the first one the first law which is the law of uh, law of inertia the second one is the law of acceleration and lastly we have the action reaction law okay so for the first law which is the law of inertia we have uh, it is it is stated there that uh, an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will will stay in motion unless an unbalanced force acted on it, on them, okay? And the second law, which is the law of uh, acceleration, is uh, the direction of the force is, uh, is the same as the acceleration, is directly proportional to the acceleration, okay? And lastly, we have the action-reaction law, which states that uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite uh, reaction okay so so that is the the, uh, the third law of uh, third law of uh, motion so for every action there is an equal and opposite uh, reaction okay so let's uh, proceed uh, to our lesson okay so Previously, we have discussed about the contact forces, which we have the normal force, the friction, and the tension. So, in this case, we will be dealing or we will be discussing with this and uh, the application of the loss of motion. Okay, so let's start first with the normal force. So, when we talk about normal force, it is a contact force that is being exerted in the surface. In the surface, guys, so normally on the ground normally on uh, on where you were standing okay so it is a perpendicular uh it's a perpendicular force to the surface perpendicular meaning 90 degrees to the surface so yeah an example is a man standing on the on a floor okay so yeah so as you can see the man is just standing there so and the weight of the man is going downwards uh, for for the reason that uh, it is affected greatly affected by the gravity and okay so the normal force there is the force that acts on the uh, on the weight of the man and that is our normal force so as you can see it is perpendicular on where the man is standing okay so it is automatically whether you stand the ground gives off the same uh the same force or the same uh the same force yes the same force that uh, you were exerting okay so sir why why is it like that because if not if hindi siya nagre-return ng uh ng force ng normal force you will be falling okay so that's why so that's why this normal force acts on your weight if uh when you uh, whenever you are standing Okay, so this is our third law of motion as you can see that uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so let's uh, move to the next. Yeah, and this is the weight of the man and the normal force is going up. Okay, so the weight of the man is going down and the normal force is going up. Third law of motion, uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so the next thing is we have the frictional force, the sliding contact of the object that is going in a different direction as of the direction of the object. So as you can see, guys, the sliding contact of the object that is going on a different direction. Sir, why did you say that going on a different direction? Guys, uh, the second law of motion is uh, whenever you are pushing an object, the acceleration is also on the pushing action. Okay, it's also the same as the uh, the force exerted. Okay, however, when we talk about frictional force, the friction, the frictional force is on the opposite. Because if it is on the same direction, there will be no contact at all. If there will be contact, 
uh, the frictional force will act on the opposite. Okay, so kaya nga friction sliding, you cannot slide on the same, on the same direction. Okay, so that will be always uh, on the opposing directions. Okay, so yan. So the object or the man is going to the left while the frictional, the frictional force is on the opposing direction. So, so is it always like that? Yes, it's always. Because you cannot create friction if you are not uh, going on the... on the. Uh, you can create friction if the frictional force is going on the same direction. It is always on the opposite uh, direction. It is, it is always and it will always be on the opposite direction. Okay? So, next is we have the tension. So, this is another contact force. When we say tension, this is not just uh, a heart-pounding experience. But uh, when we say tension, tension is, uh, the tension is uh, normally found on strings, ropes, and um, other, uh, uh, other, uh, uh, other uh, equipments that there is an attachment to a object so the tension is going up so kasi uh, if the weight is going down automatically the tension will be going up sir the question is why why is it uh, not going with the flow not going with the object if it is going uh, if it is on the same direction as the object it means the object is falling down Okay. It will not be attached or it will not be suspended. Uh, it will not be suspended in air if uh, if there will be no tension. Okay, so the tension means it holds the object. Uh, it holds the object from the suspended uh, position, suspended in the air position. Okay, that is why uh, the tension is on the opposite direction of our uh, weight. So guys, again, this is third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay? So the weight goes down and the tension goes up. Okay? So if it is on the same direction again, they will be falling. Okay? So let's proceed to free body diagram. Free body diagram is the uh, placing or assuming or uh, or uh, discerning uh, where the forces uh, will be going. So free body diagram is a method of creating a model of the forces in a certain object. For example, we have this guy pushing a sofa. Sofa, sofa, whatever it is. Still, the man is pushing that object. Okay, so that man is pushing an object. Let's see. Okay, so... As you can see, guys, the sofa is going down with its weight. So that is a mass times gravity. So that is a mass times gravity, as you can see. The, uh, the, the person, the man, is pushing uh, on the left, uh, to the left direction. So that is where the pushing action or the applied force. So we have two, two, uh, two obvious, two obvious uh, uh, forces there the weight the weight of our sofa which is uh, mass times the acceleration or the gravitational acceleration that is our uh, weight okay. and then the next is the man pushing action the pushing action is what we called also the applied force so that is the applied force so that our uh, our sofa will move to the left Okay, so that is the pushing direction. That is the applied force. And as you can see, guys, we have uh, one force going to the right and another force going upward. So the force going to the to the right is what we call the frictional force. Okay, so that is our frictional force. That is opposite of our applied force. So as you uh, uh, if you remember, guys, a while ago that uh, when we talk about the applied force the opposite of our applied force is our frictional force okay so when we talk about frictional force so sir uh, again sabi niyo po uh, third law of motion for every action there is an equivalent opposite reaction 
if uh if we can push the object uh the applied force is stronger than our frictional force yes another term for frictional force is the resistive force okay so it is it will not leave it, it will not stop you from moving but it will just limit you from uh, moving it easier okay so that is our that is our um frictional force that is the resistance resistive force so you cannot just move the object uh um easy or it will not be smooth so uh that is the function of our frictional force okay and lastly we have the normal force so that is the opposite of our weight so that is that is acting upon from the bottom going up okay so that is our free body diagram for an object that is placed on the ground or in the surface so that the computation of this is uh, x axis to x axis and y axis to y axis so as you can see guys we have uh, vertical to vertical so uh, we did not associate the weight to our pushing action or our applied force rather that we associate our weight to our normal force okay and we associate our frictional force to our um, applied force so they are uh, uh, they are the ones that are connected okay Okay, those are uh, those are connected. Okay, so for our horizontal, uh, we have a little twist on this. We have a little twist on this. So we ha uh, it is not always equal. The, like I said a while ago, that um, uh, the applied force is not equal to our frictional force because because if it is equal, we cannot push the object. Okay, if it is equal. So if it is not equal because we because uh, the frictional force acts as the resistive force in uh, whenever we are pushing an object okay so it will not be equal so we have a force uh, we have a formula of frictional force is equivalent to normal force multiplied to mu mu the mic uh, the micro unit the, the the micro unit so mu red uh the, that is also known as our coefficient of friction okay coefficient of friction is a unit less uh, a unit less uh, value and uh it it ranges only from zero to one okay it, it only ranges from zero to one okay so the thing about it is when uh, if it is zero if it is zero Meaning we are on a smooth surface. Okay, we are on a smooth surface. If it is 1, it means that the frictional force is equivalent to our applied force. Okay, if it is 1. Okay, so we have here the, uh, yeah, that is the vertical and we have the uh, horizontal. So, again, um, vertical to vertical, the, the, the method of computation here is vertical to vertical and horizontal to horizontal. However, our frictional force is not equivalent to our uh, applied force or our normal force. Okay. So we have here another free body diagram, but this one is for the tension. So we have here the free body diagram of tension. As you can see, guys, we have a person suspended in air so the weight of the person depends on the gravity and then the tension is also the same as our weight okay but wait guys this is just a single string now we will proceed to a double string okay so sir what difference does the double string and the single string have so we have here two tensions meaning we have tension 1 and we have tension 2 which is equivalent to our weight so if if our uh, if our weight is going down automatically there will be tension on both strings not only one there will be tension on both strings okay both strings and those strings will be added so they they can so they will be equal to our weight Okay, so if we are uh, if we are suspended in the air uh, using only single string, uh, the tension uh, is great 
on that single string. However, if we are suspended uh, in two strings, like uh, like this person, uh, the tension on the ropes on the on the strings or on the ropes will be less compared to a single string. Okay, so let's proceed to an example. So we have here the first example is a box suspended in air supported by two parallel ropes, both 90 degrees from the horizontal. The box weighs 15 kilograms and solve for the tension. So based on the diagram, two tensions are uh, are directing upwards and the box downwards since the weight is dependent on the, gra on the gravity. Okay, so we will be uh, asked to uh, solve for T1 and T2. So let's... Uh, Try solve this. Try to solve this one, and then I'll be discussing this one.
Okay, so time's up. So let's uh, discuss this one. Okay, so for the horizontal component, there will always be horizontal components. Even those two strings are 90 degrees. Okay, so for the horizontal component, summation of x, summation of x, which is the p1 and p2, will be, uh, uh, will be, zero will be equal to zero so for this we have t1 cosine 90 minus t2 cosine 90 sir why is it minus since they are both going upward so as you can see guys they are both 90 degrees so one uh, this is the tension one and this is the tension two as you can see guys they are they both came from 90 degrees okay they came they they are both 90 deg uh, came from uh, 90 degrees so it is safe to say that uh, they are uh, one is going to the left and one is going to the right okay so guys let's take a look at the drawing so this is the tension one and this is the tension two tension one tension two so they both came from like this okay so since this is cosine 90 it is safe to say that cosine 90 is equivalent to zero so let's use this calculator guys cosine 90, 0. Okay, so cosine 90 is equivalent to 0. Okay, so moving on to our, uh, again, that for this, uh, vertical component. So for the vertical component, guys, we have um, sine. We will be using sine, okay? So uh, this will not be always, this This will depend on the orientation of our uh, of our angle okay so this one came from uh, the x-axis the the nine the degree came from the x-axis so for this vertical component uh, summation of y summation of uh, y this is read as uh, this is read as summation this sigma summation meaning the summative of our x-axis and the y-axis that's why it is called summation summation of y we have uh three uh three forces on the y-axis okay so sir why is it three we have tension one tension two and our weight okay so guys as you can see our weight is equivalent to mass times gravity so we have here one uh, 15 multiplied to 9.8 meter per second square which will result to 100 47. However, sir, um, why is it T1 and T2 on the other side of the equal sign and uh, the 147 is on the other side, on the opposite side? For the reason that, uh, again, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Tension 1 and tension 2 is both going up and the weight is going down. If the weight is going down, meaning it is equal to our tension 1 and tension 2. Okay, so if it is T1 sine 90 plus T2 sine 90 is equivalent to 147, what's next, sir? What are we going next? Since, as you can see, that our cosine 90 is equivalent to 0, it is clearly stated on the first statement, which is the horizontal component, that our T1 is equivalent to our T2. Okay. Since they both zero, they both came for uh they they both have an uh, a, a score or a value of zero. T one is clearly equal to T two. Okay, so if it is equal to T two, then we can safe to safely assume that uh we can replace our T one or our T two as the T one also. Meaning we have here a formula of 1 plus T1 and another 1 plus uh, 1 T1 which is equivalent to 147. So combining those two we will have 2 T1 equivalent to 147 and T1 and uh, using uh, we divide both sides by 2 we divide both sides by 2 we can cancel out 2 which is T1 is equivalent to 147 and T1 will be equivalent to 773.5 Newton. If T1 is equivalent to T2, then T2 also have the same value. 
Okay. So, okay. So, T1 will be equivalent to T2. Okay? So, let's proceed to the next example. So, this is the last example. A man pushing a sofa. So, this is the same as our previous uh, example about the free body diagram about the sofa and that's we will be using. Okay. So, we have visualized what is the, uh, what is the, the likes of uh, the person pushing a sofa. So, we will now be um, uh, directing uh, the free body diagram. So, guys, this is the normal force going upwards. The weight going down. The force applied is going to the left and uh, the, for the frictional force is going to the opposite direction of our force applied. Okay, so we will be having uh, this given, which is 75 kilograms, um, frictional coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.6, and the applied force of 600 newton. So we have the required, uh, we have the required forces, normal force, frictional force, and oh, we have acceleration. So how are we going to do that? So a man is pushing a sofa, having a mass of 75 kilograms, and applying 600 newton of force to the left. Being the floor is rough and having a frictional coefficient of 0 0.6. So for the normal force, frictional force, and the acceleration. So we will not be doing any timer. So guys, this. We have the normal force which is equivalent to our weight, right? This is our uh, first um, formula for our free bud diagram. By the way, guys, there will be no formulas fix for our... Uh, free body diagram it is based solely on how you uh, put all the uh, force in uh, the diagram okay so if it is normal force which is equivalent to weight and we know that weight is equivalent to mass times gravity so we have here 75 kilograms multiplied to 9.8 meter per second square which is then returned our normal force will be then 735 newton okay so sir how does that happen so the normal force going up and the weight is going down so using again or applying again the third law of motion for there is for for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so we have that normal force and our weight of uh, 735 newton okay so next we have our frictional force Solving for the frictional force, guys. We have the formula of mu multiplied to our normal force. We have mu of 0 0.6 newton and the normal force of 735 newton. 735 newton for our normal force. Sir, why are we using the normal force instead of the uh, force applied? Okay, so for the force applied... It is, uh, for, for the force applied, uh, you will not be applying a force that is lesser than our normal force. Because if it is lesser than the normal force, you will not be able to move our, uh, our object. Okay, so if it is greater, then you can move the sofa. Okay, and the frictional force will not be also uh, greater than our... Uh, force applied or it will not be equal to our force applied okay so with that our force applied going to the left and our frictional force going to the right we will have our frictional force of 441 newton with the use of our uh, frictional coefficient and our uh, normal force okay and lastly we have the force applied and the, thus the computation of our acceleration Okay, so for the computation of our acceleration is we have the force applied minus our frictional force and this is the uh, actual force which is MA. The actual force is equivalent also to our mass times acceleration and we have here the force applied of 600 Newton minus the frictional force of 441 and we have here seven. 
55 kilograms and the remaining is the acceleration. So solving for that, we have 600, 600 minus 441 divided by 75. We will have an applied force or apl uh, acceleration of, we have an acceleration of 2.12 meters per second square. So as you can see guys, that is our unit of uh, unit from our uh, acceleration for our acceleration guys kilogram kilogram multiplied to meter per second square will result to newton okay kilogram times meter per second square will result to newton okay so so yeah uh, so the the purpose of having a free body diagram is to identify all of the uh, all of the uh, what the call it? all of the directions of our forces so uh, after identifying all the directions of the forces this is the time that we make our own formula so those formulas is just simple it's just the addition subtraction of x axis and another x axis and the addition and subtraction also of the y axis and another y-axis. So that is the essence of our free body diagram. You can easily, uh, you can easily uh, identify those just by looking at. It. So always remember those four, four fundamental uh, forces that we have: the normal force, the uh, weight, the object that has a gra mass, and the uh, multiplied to our gravi gravity. We have the um, applied force and we have the uh, frictional force so those are the only four uh, forces that can be uh, identified in our easily identified in our free body diagram uh, in our free body diagram drawings okay so thank you guys for uh, listening and this is our uh, topic for application of laws of Newton. So, thank you guys and uh, see ya. Bye.